Good evening, friends. Stephen Bernoulli here with Israeli News Live, and I wanted to talk to you guys about some things that, as we're watching Trump uh, as he's moved into power, what's really going on and why. Uh, as we see, uh, NBC was reporting pressure on China and peer trolling, they called it, why Trump is pushing an expansionist agenda. And as everybody knows, he wants to make Canada a, a state. Uh, he wants to also acquire Greenland. And even the Panama Canal, he's wanting to recapture the Panama Canal. And some people might think of these things just as strategic. But you may not realize that if Canada becomes a state, and he may do that by force uh, if Canada doesn't surrender peacefully, it would actually effectively do away with the Constitution and allow him to become truly a dictator and could do a longer term than normal. I got this message here uh, from a good friend of mine who's worked uh, a lot. Well, I should say he's got a lot of intelligence, not that he's intelligence analyst or anything, but he's very intelligent himself. He said that they know they are in a, they're in a fix with Trump. He said, you see, only... Uh, the country Trump has not gone after is Iran. He is showing how teeth to Canada, Mexico, China, Europeans, Panama, Colombia, and the list goes on and on, but not to the arch enemy, Iran. Now, Iran is weakened, so it is a perfect opportunity for someone uh, <clears throat> with Trump's jungle worldview, but nothing. He has even threatened Russia with sanctions, but nothing on Iran. Funny. Right now, I'm worried about Canada. <clears throat> Trump is trying to invade Canada and to use that as to change the Constitution so he can stay in power. That is why he has all these yes men all around him and in all positions. This is going to end up with tanks rolling over the border or Canada surrendering, surrendering peacefully. Just wait and see. <clears throat> so I kind of agree with him on a number of issues. Uh, also, because of an interview I'm going to be doing with a friend of mine, Jeff, here, uh, not in the not so distant future. And that deals with Greenland. He mentioned to me the other day, he said, Steve, he said, think about it. He said, when you look at Greenland, and let me see if I can just pull this up. Uh, let's see. Navy map. And pole shift. If you remember that 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 navy map, and let's see, um, let's go at the images on that. I'd like to see if I can't catch uh, a bigger part of the world, not just the United States there, but uh, ew. <clears throat> well, here's here's one. Well, here we go. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Let me take you to this one right here. Here we go. This is the one that I wanted you to see here. Future map of the world. Notice how small the United States becomes. Uh, there is some portions there of Canada that are still intact, but the real big place that's intact and got larger than before is Greenland. Another reason why he would like to get a hold of that. Now, I think that's maybe a little bit... Uh, a little bit crazy. Uh, this one right here shows more of the United States intact here. <clears throat> and again, uh, the southern part of Canada, uh, northern part of Canada to the west there, that's a lot of territory. And that could be a very good reason why Donald Trump wants Canada as well. And not just, of course, Greenland. Um, <clears throat> like I said, though, this map right here, though, definitely shows uh, Greenland being a much larger land mass as a result of this pole shift. And there are some that believe that the pole shift would be caused by Planet X, but uh, then there's some that don't think that exactly that. But it could be a lot of the reasons why, as uh, the Los Angeles Times just reported, Trump is creating an imperial presidency and he's doing it by decree. Well, let's face it, that's all he does is executive order after executive order. And uh, he really doesn't care what anybody has to say about anything. Uh, 
I want to play for you though here, just for a moment here, this uh, from uh, Space Weather News. And uh, this will kind of give you an idea of something that uh, Jeff and I were speaking about, and that's a magnetic pole shift. We already know that it's drifting about 32 kilometers a year. The North Pole is changing, going towards Russia uh, the entire time. That's moving everything further south. But they're supposed to be... Everyone, it was really great to see so many posts change. about the Aurora this week. Awesome you guys got to see it. And for many of you, it was the second time this year after basically never having seen them before. But not too many people are asking, why all of a sudden are we seeing them so well? You may have heard that it is sunspot maximum. True, but that happens every 11 years. Yes, we had a solar flare release a CME at Earth, but that has happened hundreds of times in just the last decade. This one was big, but not that big. So why have we had these auroral sightings this year, now, when much bigger events have hit us in the past and went largely unnoticed? Well, apart from the solar activity, the main factor in the production of aurora is Earth's magnetic field, and it has been weakening. You may have heard we are in the beginning stages of a magnetic pole shift, a rapid one. The magnetic poles are moving. The overall magnetic protection of our Earth is fading, which is why these recent solar events are producing much more aurora than would normally be expected. These magnetic pole shifts are also called geomagnetic excursions, and they happen cyclically on our planet. This last week, we saw aurora in Florida. That is extremely rare. And... This solar storm didn't even hit the highest storm levels. Aurora was seen at the Mexico border? Wild. Aurora in the tropics? Cuba, Puerto Rico. Absolutely ridiculous. As and by the way, <clears throat> not only do you see auroras, but the storms. The snowstorm down in the south. The earthquakes, the volcanoes. There's so many more things that go with this magnetic pole shift or the precursor to it. Uh, let's play this here as well, a little clip here from another broadcast that he did here about 10 months ago. Years of swearing up and down it wasn't possible, that it wasn't a thing. Astronomers have finally admitted that Micronova exist. These events recurring at the Sun are not only the only explanation for the Earth isotope evidence, they not only can be triggered two ways by the galactic current sheet, but they are also actually needed to explain our real universe observations of the galaxy. Same story, different fields of science. So let's come back to Earth. Every catastrophist throughout history included the Earth tilting, turning over, and creating massive tsunamis as the oceans slosh around. Einstein and several others agreed that it would be the unlocking of the crust from the mantle that would cause the shift, but they couldn't figure out how. How do you unlock the crust? With modern evidence, we now know that the crust is locked with a thermoelectric equilibrium, and scientists already know the sun's impacts induce electric current into the mantle, right through that crust mantle boundary. The solar micronova surges enough of that current to disrupt the thermal and electrical aspects of that thermoelectric equilibrium, unlocking the crust. So, the micronova is also needed to finally finish the stories of the catastrophist claims that the Earth tilts, turns, and triggers massive tsunamis. Interestingly, several scientists in Einstein's time also did the math on what would happen if they could unlock the crust. The ice weight at the polar region would want to spin at the equator, the point of greatest centrifugal force, and the greatest bulk of ice happens to want to tilt Earth such that Greenland would end up at the equator, and so would the portion of Antarctica that is south of Australia. This would put the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean and Peru at the North and South Poles, which is exactly what was predicted long ago by several other catastrophists who didn't have that ice math from Einstein's time, which is absolutely amazing. But it's not just a two-way coincidence there. The magnetic poles are already moving, as we mentioned, and they are set to meet one another, to collide in the Bay of Bengal, with Peru, of course, being on the opposite side of the planet. If the planet tilts as previously predicted, and as the later math would suggest it will, it will just so happen to put the magnetic poles back at the North and South Geographic Pole. That's perhaps the greatest coincidence of them all, and yet, just another on our list. 
the story grows even more interesting when we realize that religious texts and mythological stories say exactly this will happen, from the earth swaying to and fro like a drunkard, to the black sun and days of darkness, there which would go. be caused by the material accumulating on the sun before the micronova, to the great waves and floods and fire and volcanoes and the loss of species. Now, how in the world do those old stories now match the science? Not only the science, but the humanity as well. The culture of us humans today makes the... Let me back up just for a moment, and I'll put a link to this video here for you. Uh, but I wanted you to be able to see the United States on this map right here. Let's see here. The polar region would want to spin at the equator, the point of greatest centrifugal force, and the greatest bulk of ice happens to want to tell Earth such that Greenland would end up at the equator. And There's the United States. We would be in the southern hemisphere. So our, uh, in fact, the, the, the Canada would actually be like in the case of where Argentina is today. Alaska would be sitting at the equator. Greenland, which would be a much larger land mass, as you can see, be part of the equator on both sides. And, of course, the North Pole, which Russia has been fighting with the United States over that territory, would now be, I uh, would say, right around the Arkansas area. Uh, at least part of it. Part of it would be there at the equator as well. So, is this really going to happen? Well, you'll have to stay tuned on our Patreon channel once we interview Jeff. Patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. He talks about those timings, talks about the Deagle Report, and will share more information and insight on this subject. I'm just barely scratching the surface. Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening.